This is Eric Hunter, and I would like to show you the Universal Pendulum 2.0. This is a new Universal Pendulum design. It's modernized, it's updated, and I want to show it to you in this video to briefly explain um, its structure its, and its function. All right, so when you first see the Universal Pendulum, it looks extremely complicated, and it's very confusing looking. And if you've researched this on the internet or taken courses from other people on it, you'll be confused. Because honestly, what I found is that most people who teach on this subject don't understand this pendulum at all. So what is going on here? If you wanna understand, it's very simple. Basically, all of these abbreviations stand for different types of energy, mostly visible light, but also other forms of electromagnetic energy. And I'm gonna go into that in more detail in a second. And these, this axis here, these letters on this equator here are repeated both on this vertical axis and on this vertical axis. So it's the same energies just being repeated over and over and over again based on, on these different axes. What I've found though, is that you only need to use the, equ the equator here, the central axis, the midpoint between the bows. Since the energies are the same on all the axes, what I've found is that this central axis is the strongest. So you can just ignore these vertical axes. I did include them on the pendulum though for completeness. All right, so how does this pendulum work? Basically, you decide, well, what kind of energy do I want to send? Like, let's say you want to send orange light. You just take the pendulum, you turn it so that the bow is over the letter O for orange. You get the excess string in your hand, and it doesn't matter exactly how long the string is, unlike other universal pendulums where they say you got to hold it at a certain length. That's irrelevant. You just hold it where you're comfortable. And then you just let the pendulum spin. Now, if you're just holding it over a person, you don't need to say a command, you just let it spin. So I can put it over my hand chakra, it's gonna spin. All right, or you can send it with a command. You can say, send orange light. Or you could say, let's say you wanted to heal someone and you wanted to send them orange light at the same time. Let's say you want to heal their digestive system because orange is one of the lower chakras. You could say, send healing to their digestive system. So your command will be sent. And at the same time, low level orange light will also be sent. And the combination of the command with your light can stimulate healing. So this is a tool for sending light energy, essentially. That's what this pendulum is all about, sending light. And it's very simple to use. You just turn the bow to the energy you want to send. For example, R is red. Say you want to stimulate someone's root chakra, which resonates with red. Turn it to R, hold the pendulum. And you can either hold it over the person or hold it over a witness card and just passively send the red without a command. Or you could say, send red energy. And then you would have your command combined with the red light. Or you could say something like, stimulate the person's root chakra as the command or heal the person's root chakra or strengthen the root chakra. And simultaneously, the red light is passively being emitted from this and you don't need to say it, it's just happening automatically. So if you've done work with pendulum alchemy or pendulum healing at all, you can see the value of this tool right away. It's sending energy, specific energies that you can use. So let's just take a brief look at these energies. I've created charts. And if you buy one of these uh, Universal Pendulum 2.0s, I send a chart um, with it so you can easily do this. I'll just show you here. Here we go. So the abbreviations on the pendulum, you have UV for ultraviolet, you have violet, blue, blue, green, green, yellow, orange, red, infrared, and that, so those are basically, ultraviolet is a form of light that's not visible, but violet, blue, blue, green, green, yellow, orange, red, these are the colors of the rainbow. This is visible light. And then you have infrared, which is another form of energy, which is mostly in the form of heat. Then we have here things that are not 
true energies per se. So we have black. That's a quality of energy. And what black means is that all of the visible light is being absorbed or it's not being reflected by the pendulum. White means that everything is being reflected by the pendulum. Any light that comes to the pendulum is being reflected by it. And gray is an intermediate state. And what that means is that, let's say my hand is, the, is illustrating what's happening with light. So if the light is being reflected, my hand is opened up. If the light is being absorbed, my hand is closed. So black is closed, white is open. This is absorption of light or non-reflectance. This is the reflection of light. So what gray stands for is alternating between these two states. So you have black first, then white, black, white, absorption, reflection, absorption, reflection, and it happens very quickly. That's what the gray represents. So on the universal pendulum 2.0, you'll see right here, let me show you. So you have black, the absorption of light, white, the reflection of light, gray is the intermediate state where it's absorbing, reflecting, absorbing, reflecting. And this gray is very important because it is an interruption signal. Think about it, if the lights are just on in a room, everything is just kind of static. But as soon as if someone came in and just started turning the light on and off, you'd be like, what? It creates an interruption. It interrupts everything that's going on. So that's what this does. And this is one of the most useful energies that we have available to us for pendulum alchemy and healing because interrupting what's going on allows new potentials to emerge. It can also cause things that are not wanted to end naturally. And it can also strengthen things that we want. So very, very useful energy and you can do it with this pendulum. Okay, let's go back to the energy here. So very practically, when you know these different energies, which you can set on this pendulum, you can use it for healing. So I have correlated all of these energies to the sun and the passage of the sun and the stages of human life and the stages of health and, and different forces in nature, such as the chakras and things. And each energy has its own quality. So for example, violet is spirituality, blue is for calming, Blue green is for revitalization. Green is for growing. Yellow is for nurturing. Um, red is for energizing or conceiving. Um, black is for removing excess energy. Gray is for interruptions. White is for providing all the energies for healing. So you can be working on a situation, a pendulum alchemy or a pendulum healing situation where you wanna stimulate the situation to change in a certain direction you want to cause a stimulus that provokes a response, you can use the universal pendulum 2.0 to do that by setting it to the appropriate color or energy on the pendulum and sending it. So here are the chakras and organs. You can, you'll get this when you get one of these. I'll send it to you. All right, so let's just say someone has a burn or a bruise. You can send a series of energies using this pendulum. So you can send ultraviolet light, UV, to support you know, antisepsis or cleaning. You can use blue energy to help calm or cool the burn. You can send blue-green to help revitalize the burn tissue. You could sell green to boost the growth of new cells to heal the burn or else to boost the immune system. You can send red to help reduce inflammation and promote healing. You can send infrared to help promote healing because infrared is really good for healing and regeneration. You can use black to remove excess energy from the trauma of the burn. So once you have one of these universal pendulums, you can use this in addition to your other pendulums and in, in addition to, of course, standard medical care, like obviously take care of the burn if it's serious, go to the hospital, you know, or just put and you know, put something on it, you know, et cetera. But this can be used as a supplement to help to heal. And it's very easy to do. You just literally just set the color you want and you don't have to do it in any particular order. So, you know, you can start with UV. So you just turn it to UV on here, turn it over UV, hold it, 
let it spin. And this can be done as a distance healing. So if the person is being treated by a doctor or in their hospital, you can do this at home. You can do this wherever. Just you can be doing it as a distance, sending it. If it's a minor burn that doesn't require going to a doctor, you can just do this yourself at home or do it over somebody. Okay. Um, so you would send UV and then you could go to B, just turn it to blue for the calming. And then you put it on B and then you do it with a BG, et cetera. So you just keep just spinning this thing around to the different settings so that the string is directly over the setting you want and then you let it go. And you can use this for anything. I mean, um, you know, stomach ache, headache, cold and flu, mania, insomnia, autism. The blue is very effective for calming. You know, chakra healing, you can set it to each chakra. I show you the colors, how they're related to the chakra. So you just can literally just take the pendulum, set it to the chakra you wanna work on. So you can send specific types of energy using this pendulum and that's extremely useful and extremely valuable. So this is a great pendulum to have that's very handy. And you know, every pendulum alchemist should have one of these in their collections. And what I have done with the Universal Pendulum 2.0 is I've simplified this. I've cut through all of the old wives tales, all of the mystique. This pendulum does not produce the dreaded negative green energy. So it's perfectly safe to leave it on any setting you want because there is no negative green. I got rid of the Greek letters because they are totally irrelevant and have no meaning. When you research the meaning of them, it's, it's ridiculous. It's totally illogical. I got rid of them. You don't need them. I put on the basic energies that are actually being produced by this. So this is very, very simple to use. You never have to move the string up or down like I said, I just put these marks on here for the sake of completeness, but you don't need them. You only need the central access and you can hold the string anywhere you want and it's comfortable. So this is really cool. If you took my pendulum tuning course, you could take this pendulum, tune it to let's say love vibration, put a little knot in the string at love, and then you can be sending whatever energy you want magnified by love or any other vibration you want. You can tune this pendulum. So that's really fun as well. So a couple other things about this pendulum, um, care and use. So it is, you know, it's not, it's not super fragile, but it's not super strong either. So you want to have dry, clean hands when you touch it. So you don't get oil on it or anything that, you know, could make it dirty. You want to be mostly be careful with this bow. Um, don't pull it by the string to turn the bow. Just use your fingers gently to move it around and don't add a lot of force. It should turn fairly easily. Obviously don't sit on this or throw it across the room or step on it. That will could potentially bend or break this bow. This is fairly strong, but it's not indestructible. So I send a box with it, a decorative box that you can, it's a pretty box. You can put it in to keep it safe when you're not using it. And the main thing is just be careful when you're turning the bow. Um, just don't add, don't put a lot of force on it and don't put a lot of uneven force. You can see it's screwed in. So it's pretty strong and there's plastic washers in there. And this is a metal, it's pretty strong, but it's not indestructible. So just be careful a little bit with it, but you don't have to be, you know, if you're overly careful with it, just be aware, you know, that you don't add any excess force to it. All right, let's sort of show you a couple other things about this. So the, this getting into the theory a little more, like, so how does this thing like work supposedly? So the basic idea here is that a circular object is thought to act like a prism. And when energy from the environment, mostly light energy, hits the ball shape, it will break the light up into the spectrum. Just like if you shine light through a prism, it will, like there's white light going into the prism, it can break the light up into its component energies or colors. Same thing with this pendulum. Now, the way that it's that it works is that there's magnetism. This is magnetic, this object. So that's the other thing. Don't put it close to a magnet because the magnet might stick to it. And it, it won't hurt the, it won't damage the, the usefulness of the pendulum, but it just could scratch the surface or whatever. So it would just be a cosmetic issue. 
All right, so, but basically these things have to be magnetic to work. And there are several places where there's magnetism. So number one, there's magnetism on the bow here. Number two, there's magnetism on the little nails that are here. And then number three, I filled the inside of the pendulum with iron filings to make it magnetic. Now in a traditional universal pendulum, they have to put a metal set of metal discs, steel discs inside in order to generate the magnetism required for it to work. So if it was just wood without the discs, it would not be very effective. The, having the magnetism inside the pendulum is essential. So having these different magnetic points, so the bow is opposite the, the, the nails, this creates polarity. And then the whole object is magnetic. So it creates polarity and this allows the light to become fixed when it interacts with this. So when you hold it like this and light from the environment is hitting it, it's, it's, there's a polarity that's created so that these light positions don't move. Because if you don't have the magnetism, the light, how it breaks, and will constantly be shifting over the surface. So having the magnetism keeps the, the light locked in place so that when you put it on one of these settings, it's, setting, it's sending out that type of light that you want to use. Okay, a couple of things about it. Um, yeah, it's having the magnetism inside makes it strong and putting the iron filings in it makes it much stronger than the wooden ones. So the energy on this is extremely strong. It's also very subtle. So for example, like if somebody's trying to fall asleep, don't set it to red because that will energize their root chakra. So there's the red, right? That will energize their root chakra and it will completely wake them up. I made that mistake once I was doing a healing for someone, they wanted some sleep. So I set it to blue B and they were like, wow, this is so relaxing. I'm really falling asleep. And I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna ground them a little more to help them really fall asleep. I said it to red and the person was like, what did you do? <laughs> like wide awake right now. So, you know, just, it's not, it's not harmful, but it just, you know, you gotta think about what you're doing with this thing because it is extremely strong. So, but like, you know, the person did fall asleep. It wasn't the end of the world just for briefly, they were energized. So just think about what you're doing with this when you use it. But like I said, there's nothing harmful about it. There's no harmful energies that come from it. It's just sending a stimulus that magnifies energies that are already present in the environment. And these energies are safe. So you don't need to worry about like the negative green and you don't have to like set it on a special setting so that it won't kill you or give you cancer or something. It's, that's not even a concern with this at all. Okay, so going back, let's take a look at the energy here. So a lot of people who are into pendulums and stuff like don't really know much about energy some of you do, but some of you don't. So I just wanna talk about this briefly. So we have here the electromagnetic spectrum. And here we have long wavelength energy. You can see with the squiggly lines, and then it goes to short. And the longer the wavelength, the lower the energy. And then the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. So on this end of the spectrum, we have radio waves and microwaves. These are fairly long wavelengths of energy. It is my belief that the universal pendulum does not emit radio waves or microwaves. The equivalent for that on this pendulum is black absorption because there's no light being emanated. I believe this pendulum only works with visible light. So this is represented by black. Now infrared right here, the visible light spectrum, all the colors of the rainbow and ultraviolet, those are the only energies that I believe the universal pendulum based on my observations, these are the only energies this thing actually emits. Ultraviolet light comes from our hands, Visible light comes from our hands. Infrared light comes from our hands. All of these energies come from the human body. They are very common in the environment. 
And these are the only energies that I believe the universal pendulum actually works with in literal form. And you can see these on here. So ultraviolet is UV, then you have infrared, and then you have all the colors of the rainbow here. Okay, now, X-rays and gamma rays. The universal pendulum does not influence these at all. And it may think about this, right? X-rays and gamma rays. What do you use X-rays for? Looking inside of the human body, looking inside people's teeth. X-rays penetrate. If you were to shoot X-rays at this universal pendulum, they would just go right through the pendulum. You would not be, the pendulum would not be able to reflect or emanate these energies at all. Gamma rays are even more intense. These are, this is nuclear energy. So these energies, these gamma rays, they can pass through concrete and steel easily. They would just shoot right through this pendulum. There is no way that this pendulum could influence these energy rays. On top of that, gamma rays and other high energy rays like cosmic rays, these are produced by ionizing radiation. So atoms need to literally lose electrons, they need to split, you know, it has to be fission occurring in order for these energies to be given off. Now, unless one of these pendulums is made of a radioactive material like plutonium or something, it's not going to be giving off any these rays in any significant quantity, no more than any other object in your household would. Okay, the other thing is that it requires a tremendous amount of energy to remove these, uh, to ionize things. So to create these gamma rays. So there is no way that this pendulum can do this. It's just physically impossible, there's no way. Um, it took the greatest minds of the 20th century to figure out how to do this in order to build a nuclear bomb. There is no way that a pendulum that's just a ball on a string could do that, okay? So when people talk about negative green, the founders of negative green said that negative green was more powerful than a gamma ray. And there is just no way that it would be possible for this thing to produce gamma rays or anything stronger than a gamma ray because, and it would just be impossible. That would have require nuclear fission, like a nuclear explosion, which just can't happen with a pendulum. Or it would have to somehow manipulate the gamma rays or these high energy rays in the environment, which just can't happen because they would go right through. So this whole idea that this pendulum can emanate negative green is completely ridiculous. All right. So going back here, what is going on with these uh, extreme parts of the spectrum? So what I believe is that infrared, ultraviolet, invisible light, these here, that is what is being influenced by this pendulum. The long radio waves and microwaves, it can't influence them directly. So the substitution is black just absorbing. There's no light being given off because none of this is visible light. There's no visible light here. All right. Now, the x-rays and gamma rays. Well, like I said, the, the gamma ray, it can't give that off. So what would be the archetypal equivalent of that? Well, that would be white. It would be like a, like a star exploding or a nuclear explosion where it's giving off all the light at the same time. So archetypally, it's equivalent to this white energy here, the reflection of all light. Obviously, it's not radioactive though, because you know white light comes out of light bulbs. <laughs> it's ubiquitous in the environment. It's just all the colors of the rainbow. So it's not radioactive. This is the archetypal equivalent or the substitute to, for this energy that the pendulum can't produce. It substitutes it with an energy that it can, which is white, just reflection of light. Now, the so-called negative green, well, obviously, like I said, it can't make that. It just can't because it just can't create ionizing radiation. So this represents gray. And what gray represents is the transition state between here and here. 
So let me just erase all this. You see it again. So what we have here, the end of the spectrum, because they say that negative green is the strongest part of the electromagnetic spectrum, meaning it's at the very end. And then this would be the start of the spectrum. So since the pendulum can't create this energy of ionizing gamma rays, or cause, it would be stronger than a cosmic ray. It can't produce that. So what the gray represents is an alternation between the two states of black here on this end and white here on this end. So you have here, it's going back and forth. Well, actually, hold on, let me do this here. It's going back and forth between white and black, going back and forth over and over again. Like I said, white, black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. That's the transition state. And that's represented here by gray. So colors of the rainbow, then you have total absorption black, you have the transition state gray, which is both black and white, and then you have white total reflection. The rest of it are just straightforward energies. That's how I believe this pendulum works. All right, so Universal Pendulum 2.0, a great tool, add it to your collection. Like I said, it comes with a decorative box for you to store it in, so it looks nice. This is a great pendulum to use. I also send you an instruction manual with it that has suggestions for you know, different uses of the energy for different types of healing. And there's a very complete list in there of every chakra, every organ, you know, what the general characteristic of that type of energy is. And there's also instructions on care and use. And you also saw a little bit of that here in this video. So I have these on my website, pendulumalchemy.com. I created this myself. No one else sells it. There are other universal pendulums out there. They have outdated lettering on them. They have the Greek letters, which don't make sense. And they have other complications, which are not necessary. Um, so, you know, if you have one of those other ones, great. You can still use, I have a course on the universal pendulum where I explain how to modernize one of those pendulums and use it in a, in a way that's actually, you know, makes sense and explains the theory. So check that, if you have one of the old versions of this that other people sell, check that out. But if you have this new Universal Pendulum 2.0, none of that, that course isn't necessarily really even required because it, this pendulum does not have any of these confusing complications or, or mistakes associated with it. So you don't need to get hours worth of knowledge to tr understand what, it, what it's about and how it works. Just take the handout I give you and just start using it immediately. All right, if you have questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Send you some love and healing. Bye.